So greetings to all of you who joined us in the true devotion to Mary, the consecration to the Sacred Heart of Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We were a little group and we came together, we did the consecration, and um, I've been doing some follow-up videos, and this is one of those. Um, uh, we looked at some of the exterior practices, um, such as, you know, the wearing of the chains, the praying of the rosary, the saying of the Angelus, um, the Magnificat, some of the exterior things that we can do to show our devotion. These are not per se required, but they are ways that, you know, one can build in this kind of discipline to staying close to Our Lady uh, in, uh, and, that, and that she can keep us close to her son, Jesus. Okay, so uh, we're going to turn now to interior practices. So um, before we do that, I want to explain. I, I looked everywhere for my collar all morning long. I can't find it. It's got to be here right under my nose because I had it on last night. I was on a conference anyway. You see how I need Our Lady, right? There's a beautiful story of our Blessed Mother, by the way, um, with Juan Diego. And so she told Juan, you know, to Diego to to can, can, gather up the roses that were there on the mountainside and and bring them to the bishop. So like a typical man, he just threw them into his tilma and sort of, and she says, come here. And she rearranges the roses and straightens his tilma. <laughs> I love that. I love that story. And you can see me running around looking for my collar. You know, where would I be? But right now, I, I, I'm i not going to look for it one more moment and delay the making of this video because it's just too many things are getting in the way. All right. So, but I do apologize for my, for my lack of a uh, clerical appearance. All right. So we turn to interior practices and these interior practices are just where we turn our heart, our thoughts, our mind to Blessed Mother Mary. It says here, I'm reading from, if you have this particular copy of the True Devotion, I'm, I'm reading from um, paragraph um, uh, 257. Uh, it's on page 161 of this book. So in paragraph 257, besides the external practices of the devotion which we have been describing so far, we must not omit through negligence uh, or contempt even, uh, uh, this to state the state and condition of each one will allow us to observe these interior practices. Um, some are very sanctifying interior practices. And uh, so we, we, we're going to uh, take a look at the first of four areas of an interior practice that uh, St. Louis Marie de Montfort mentions here. Number one, he says, to do all things by Mary. That is to say, we must obey her in all things. Now, without getting too theological about this, Look, I mean, you remember the old expression, what would Jesus do? <laughs> what would Mary do in a case like this? Would she grow angry and bitter and shake her fist at someone who had offended her? Um, probably not. Would, uh, would Mary um, uh, go against something that her son had said? And say, well, come on, that's, that's not good for the modern world. Come on, we have to look at this differently than Jesus could have because he lived in a different time. And a different... Would Mary talk like that? Probably not. And so again, these are the kinds of things that I think uh, we'll, we'll, we'll flesh this out a little bit now, but don't make this too theologically hard to understand. What does this mean, obeying Mary in all things? It just basically we ask ourselves. Mary is the perfect disciple of Jesus. She's sinless. She's the mother of God. Uh, she is closer to Jesus than anyone. And what would Mary do in these cases would be one way that we obey her in all things, we do all things by her. Now, um, St. Ambrose says, I'm just reading more from the book here uh, in the next paragraph, 258. St. Ambrose, who was a, a fourth century, fifth century bishop um, of Milan, he said, let the soul of Mary be in each of us to magnify the Lord. And let the spirit of Mary be in each of us to rejoice in God. So, again, to rejoice in what Mary rejoices is, is to rejoice in what God rejoices in, to take, uh, to take, if you will, pleasure in the things that God would have us do. Um, this is to have that heart of Mary. This is to have that interior practice of seeking to keep our heart like hers, listening to her son, do whatever he tells you, is her standing instruction to us. So to have this heart, if you will, as St. Ambrose says here, to, uh, again, um, uh, magnify the Lord, and uh, to rejoice in God. So we're trying to live the Catholic Christian faith, and on top of that, 
we are very um, delighted and rejoicing in the good things of God. Even as Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Hmm? Um, now, in, in order that the soul may let itself be led by Mary's spirit, De Montfort says here, it must first of all renounce its own spirit. Um, look, we all have tendencies that we know are sinful, that we have thoughts that we know are not particularly godly. They're more worldly, more selfish. Um, and the idea here is, first of all, to renounce these and say, this this would be very unbecoming. This is very unbecoming as a disciple of Jesus, and certainly as a child of Mary, uh, for me to have some of these thoughts and some of these attitudes and some of these things. So we have to, when we notice these things, renounce them and go to Mother Mary and say, please help me to get rid of these poisonous or erroneous or worldly thoughts and my attachments and things. Help me, Mother Mary. We stay close to her. We call on her frequently in our heart and our mind, and we say, you know, keep me close to you so that I can also be kept close to your son by you, you see? And so again, these are uh, this is the first way that we renounce things in us that we know are unbecoming for someone who would say, I, I, I'm, very, I'm, I'm a child of Mary spiritually. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a disciple, a member of Christ's body. You know? And so we renounce those things. Secondly, he says here, we must deliver ourselves to the spirit of Mary to be moved and influenced by it in the manner that she chooses. Now again, like I said in that story where he had, she had to straighten up the tilma of Juan Diego, you know, it, I, you know, typical guy, you know, I, you know, you got a spot on your, oh, oh, well, okay, whatever, you know, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not that concerned about it, but some other people are. Father, we need you to look a little better than that. Come over here, let's get rid of that, you know. Well, again, there are sometimes things that we make light of. Um, you know, or things that Mary wants to accomplish through us um, to lead, lead us or others closer to Jesus. And um, she wants to do them, but we were sort of resistant. I don't want to worry about that kind of stuff. You know, I, you know. But again, to be more docile to the fact that there might be some things that Mary wants me to do that aren't maybe high on my list of, or I, I hadn't even thought to do. Like I said, Juan Diego throwing those roses in there in some haphazard way. No, come here. And so she has to work with him. And again, so this again is, secondly, we must deliver ourselves to the spirit of Mary to be moved and influenced by it in the manner that she chooses. All right. So allow ourselves to be influenced by Mary. And again, staying close to her in prayer, letting our heart remain close to her, aware of her, aware of, of God's presence everywhere, but also aware of Mary's presence and the intercession of her intercession and the intercession of all the saints, you see. So these are interior practices, notice, you see, that we're asked to practice. And then thirdly, um, and, oh, by the way, he says here, some, some, the, this idea of abandoning ourselves to be influenced by her in the manner she chooses can be done simply by a glance of the mind, just being aware of her um, and wondering what would she have me do in this case. Um, or by verbally even, and within our mind at least, saying, I, I give myself to you, dear mother. Um, use me as you will. Take Take up my life and, and, and use me um, in ways that will bless you and bless, bless your son, Jesus. Okay, now thirdly, we must from time to time uh, renew uh, the same act of offering and of union. In other words, you know, throughout the day, little acts of um, reminding ourselves of Mary and her beautiful presence, her intercession, her love for us, that she's kind of hiding us in her mantle, her, her cloak, protecting us from the evil one. Just being grateful and aware of her presence and renewing and re renouncing our, our sinful and stupid attitudes and also reminding ourselves again, well, how, would, uh, how would Mary have me act? You know, She who helped form Jesus, of course, he was perfect God, but you know, in terms of his humanity, you know, what, what would Mary, who was so close to Jesus, have us do? You know, there's that incredible gospel at Cana where even Jesus sort of submitted himself to this work of Mary you know, at first, when she points out they're, 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 they don't have a lot of wine, uh, they're running out of wine, he says, well, you know, what's this got to do with you and me? But she was able to prevail on him. And I'd like you to see it a little bit differently, see? But my hour hasn't come. Well, 
And the next thing you know, he's making gallons of the stuff. You see. So again, uh, this is not asking us to, in no way does Mary uh, overrule what Jesus has for us. On the other hand, though, even with Jesus, she's sort of able to prevail on him like any good mother, especially a Jewish mother. Now, you've got to think a little differently about this. You know? And, um, you know, I think my own mother could, could do that for me, you see, make me consider something again. See? So these are some of the things that we have here then in this first interior devotion uh, to Mother Mary to do to do all things it says here uh, by Mary. Now next time we'll look at how do we do things with Mary, okay, and then through her and in her and so on. So we'll look at some of these interior practices. But this is a, a video I'd like to kind of put out another one another week or week and a half and just kind of keep you and me in the loop here about what we did when we made this consecration uh, some months ago. All right, so... Good to see you all, even if virtually, and um, I'll, I'll see you virtually again, if not before otherwise. All right. Blessings. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Amen.